So this 82nd edition of Insta Lecture will be on ZDS, Zollinger Ellison Syndrome. Now Zollinger Ellison Syndrome is a uncommon condition which is caused ultimately results in two things. A recalcitrant, highly resistant to therapy peptic ulcer disease which are the ulcers are occurring at unusual location, unusual sites and also there will be associated diarrhea. So if you get a patient with diarrhea and why diarrhea happens in this condition I will explain in a few moments with peptic ulcer disease, peptic ulcer disease plus diarrhea, then you should strongly suspect that this patient is having, could be having zollinger ellison syndrome. Now, what is zollinger ellison syndrome basically? zollinger ellison syndrome is basically caused due to a neuroendocrine tumor, gastrinoma, and as the name implies, gastrinoma secretes gastrin. That excessive secretion of the gastrin that results in diarrhea, why diarrhea, I would explain, and also there is presence of severe peptic ulcer disease. Now, gastrin, if you remember well, remember it well, the gastrin is basically secreted in the stomach, uh, in the antrum, the G cells are there, and they stimulates the parietal cell of the stomach to release abundant amount of hydrochloric acid. And in this condition, zollinger ellison syndrome, what's happening, that there is a neuroendocrine tumor is there, which is called gastrinoma, and as per the name, they are releasing abundant amount of gastrin. And these tumors, these gastrinomas are usually located in the pancreas or duodenum. And they release abundant amount of gastrin. And this excessive gastric secretion results in excessive secretion of the hydrochloric acid from the parietal cells in the stomach. And the highly excessive volume of the HCL, typically four to six times, often 10 times higher than the normal volume results in peptic ulcer disease and the peptic ulcer disease in this condition occurs also at unusual locations including distal duodenum including je jejunum in zollinger ellison syndrome typically in 75 percent cases three out of four cases we get peptic ulcer in the proximal duodenum 14 percent in the distal duodenum and 11 percent in the jejunum and these ulcers usually do not respond to the typical therapy. They are highly resistant, recalcitrant in nature, unresponsive to the usual therapy. And there is association with diarrhea. So obviously the question should be arising in your mind that why there is a diarrhea in association with peptic ulcer disease. Now what's happening that there is in gastrinoma due to the excessive amount of gastrin present that is causing stimulation of the parietal cells to release a lot of hydrochloric acid and so much amount of hydrochloric acid is produced that they also come to the proximal small intestine the duodenum and also to the jejunum and that alters the normal ph of the intestinal content or intestine small intestine because so much amount of acid cannot be neutralized by the bicarbonate secreted by the pancreas pancreas source from the pancreas so obviously the pH of the small intestine, the duodenum and the jejunum, comes down and that has myriads of effect. First, first that so much acidic environment, they, they, they are not tailor-made for this kind of acidic environment. So this acidic environment actually damages the intestinal epithelium, intestinal mucosa in the small intestine and also the pancreatic enzymes, which are coming to the small intestine, the duodenum, that gets inactivated in this low pH environment, this highly acidic environment. So all this would result in maldigestion and malabsorption, and ultimately could result in the development of the diarrhea. And so much amount of acid, which is also coming to the small intestine, that also contribute to the development of the diarrhea. So a patient with a, and that's why the peptic acid disease is also occurring in the distal part of the small intestine because so much amount of acid is produced in the stomach that they would come down not only to the proximal duodenum but also in the distal duodenum and also to the uh, jejunum and that's why 11 percent cases of ulcers are seen in the jejunum so in a nutshell what i told right you now that jollinger ellison syndrome which is named after Dr. Jolinger and Dr. Elishan, which who first described this condition in April 1956, uh, who got two cases which, who were present with this kind of severe recurrent ulcers, which are unresponsive to therapy, peptic ulcers, which are unresponsive to therapy. 
they follow these characteristic features that you'd be having a patient with recurrent ulcers, multiple ulcers at unusual locations which are unresponsive to the therapy and associated with diarrhea and also could be associated with weight loss, heartburn and other features. Coming to the diagnosis of the Jolinga Ulcer Syndrome, uh, obviously, the current word we follow the serum fasting gastrin level that need to be checked and serum fasting gastrin level would be hugely elevated. But gastrin level could be elevated due to other conditions also, secondary causes also. To rule out that you also need to check the gastric pH. In this condition, typically the serum gastrin level would be very, very high and also the gastric pH would be less than 2 in Jolinganser syndrome. But if your gastric pH is more than 2, not so acidic and you have a highly elevated serum gastric level, probably this is a secondary cause of hypergastrinemia. And also, we also do another test, which is called secretin test, which is also done uh, to, for the diagnosis of the Zollinger Ensor syndrome. And to localize the tumor, the neuroendocrine tumor, which is causing the, the gastrinoma in duodenum or in the pancreas, we also do for a scan gallium 68 scan which has nowadays come dota tech scan they say gallium 68 other key point that you like the last key point i like to mention that in all patients of jolinganser syndrome you should also rule out the possibility of a coexistent main one syndrome multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome because main one syndrome could be associated with some cases uh, with jolinganser syndrome and roughly 80 percent cases actually are sporadic and up to 20% cases could be associated with syndromes like main one syndrome. So in a nutshell, jolinger syndrome is caused by a neuroendocrine tumor, gastrinoma, which is usually the gastrinoma is located in the pancreas or duodenum. And this gastrinoma releases abundant amount of gastrin. And this gastrin stimulates the parietal cells to release a lot of ACL. And the excessive amount of this ACL secretion that is this hyperacidic environment, that hyperacidity results in the ulcer formation. And ulcers are seen at unusual locations, including distal duodenum, including jejunum. They are usually not responsive to the therapy. And they could be associated with the main one syndrome. So these are the, all the key points that are not sell about the ZD syndrome. Thank you very much.